All right, in this video, my stat stars, we're gonna be talking about FRQ question number two from the 2025 AP Stats exam. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. All right, this question dealt with collecting data. So amphids are tiny insects that feed on plants such as cabbage plants. A farmer once reduced the number of aphids in the, cabbage, in the cabbage field. A river is located 100 meters south of the cabbage field and the farmer divides the field into 25 regions of equal size. As shown in the diagram, each region has approximately the same number of cabbage plants. So here is that diagram. So we have the farmer's house at the top. We got row A, B, C, D, E, five regions in each filled with the roughly the same amount of cabbage plants. And we notice that that bottom is 100 meters from the river. All right, now they give us some more information. The farmer would like to estimate the proportion of cabbage plants in the field that are affected by amphids and believes that the extent of amphid damage is greater for the regions in the fields closer to the river. To obtain an estimate, he's considering three different sampling methods. Sampling method one, he's gonna select region three. So, which is closest to the farmer's house and further from the river. He's gonna examine every cabbage plant and that region for amphid damage. Doesn't sound like a very good sampling method. All right, sampling method number two, he's gonna randomly select one row, A, B, C, D. Just gonna select one of the rows in every region in that selected row and examine every cabbage plant for aphid damage. So he's gonna select one row and he's gonna look at every region in that one row that's selected. Sampling method three is randomly select one region from each of the rows, A, B, C, D, and E. For each selected region, examine every cabbage plants, every cabbage plant, excuse me, for amphid damage. So be careful because sometimes you gotta really think about the difference between two and three. I mean, one is basically he's just selecting one region and going to look at all of them now. He's going to look at the region close to his house. For sampling method two, he's labeling the rows and he's selecting one row and every single cabbage plant in that entire row, all those regions is going to be used. That would be a cluster sample. Sampling method two is more stratified. So he's breaking them up into rows. You got row A, B, C, D, E, and then he's going to select one region from each row. Okay, so the first question wants us to explain why sampling method one is not an appropriate sampling method for use to determine the proportion of cabbage plants that are damaged by these um, aphids. So here's what I wrote up for that. I said, listen, sampling method one is inappropriate for a few reasons. One, it is not random at all, right? Any good sample's gotta be random. He just chose the row closest to his house he will know the proportion of cabbage plants damaged by amphids in that row, but nowhere else. He also will not be able to determine if the proportion of cabbage plants by amphids closer to the river is higher than the cabbage further from the river. So remember, that was his goal. He was kind of wants to estimate, like he thinks that the plants that are closest to the river are gonna have more damage, but he never even looked at any plants near the river, so he really can't make any kind of comparison. So basically this sampling method is not representative of all. It's not gonna be a nice representative from the entire field and it's certainly not random. All right, question B. Using sampling method two, the farmer randomly selects row E. Row E was the one that randomly got selected and every cabbage and every region in that row is going to be looked at. If the farmer's belief is correct, determine whether the selection of row E is likely to provide an overestimate or an underestimate for the proportion of damaged cabbage plants. Now, if we go back to our picture here, he's basically selecting all of these. So 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, all of those cabbage plants are gonna be selected and that's what he's gonna estimate. Now remember his belief, so he's gonna get an estimate for row E, but unfortunately nowhere else. Now remember, he thinks that row E is probably gonna be higher because it's closer to the river, which means he's going to get that overestimate. So I wrote that pretty clearly here. If his sample's only cabbage from OE, he will get a proportion that is an overestimate of the proportion of cabbage damage by the aphids. He, his belief is that the regions closer to the river have a higher proportion. And if that's true, and his sample only contains cabbage that's closer to the river, then yeah, he's gonna get something that's an overestimate of what's true for the entire farm. The cabbage plants closer to his house are probably gonna have a lower proportion that are damaged. Ones in the middle are probably gonna have some that's in between the ones near the house versus near the river. So by not including any of those regions, his sample will be that overestimate. All right, and finally, question C wants us to simply use the information provided in the diagram to describe how we're gonna implement method three. Now remember, method three is the stratified one. We're gonna select one region from each row. 
Now they did want us to use the information in the diagram, so we're gonna leave the already with their numbers there. So here's what I wrote up for this. In each row, the regions are already numbered. He will start with row A. He will use a random number generator, ignoring repeats and ignoring numbers that no region in that row has. So if he's in row, re, uh, region, uh, excuse me, if he's in row A, he's only doing one, two, three, four, and five. The random number generator will be used to select one number and that corresponding region will be used for the sample. Every cabbage in that selected region will be checked for damage. He will repeat this process for row B, C, D, and E. So again, when he goes to row B, he's only gonna be using six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 and so forth for the other rows. So he's gotta make sure that any other numbers that get picked that aren't in that region, obviously are just not gonna be picked or they're just gonna be ignored using his random number generator. Now this is not the only answer that you could have for C. Another answer you could have as well is that you could use you know, a hat with pieces of paper. You just gotta describe it really, really well. So we get a hat, he's gonna put numbers one, two, three, four, and five in that hat, shake it up, pick out one, and that region will be used from row A. Then he's gonna get another hat, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, go into that hat, pick out one. That, as long as you properly describe that, you can get that one um, pretty good as well. So this overall wasn't too hard of a question, as long as you understood a couple of simple concepts about collecting data and running a good, well, it's not even really doing an experiment here, just about really collecting a good um, sample of data. So hope you did good in this question and see you in the next video for FRQ number three.